going on, everybody? Welcome back. My name is Umbered Hammy Gaming, and welcome back to another episode of this week's Fan Mail of the Week. Yet again, the second week of October, everybody. We are blowing right through this month. I felt as if this, this entire week just went by really, really fast. And before you know it, here we are today, guys. Welcome back to another awesome edition here today with your questions and my answers for you guys here today. Uh, so much to talk about, so much to discuss. We are a little under uh, a few weeks away from some of the biggest games in, in all of gaming history. Halo 5, WWE, Assassin's Creed, Fallout 4, Black Ops 3, you name it, they have it, and I really can't wait. So there is a lot to discuss here today, and I really hope you guys enjoyed. A lot of you guys are very happy that I'm back with fan mail, as seen in the previous episode from last week, and I am very grateful of you guys doing that. So without any hesitation, guys, let's begin. But before we begin, uh, I just want to take a second to say if you guys haven't checked out my second channel, you guys might want to go on ahead and do that at Unreal ENT Network. On there, you guys, you're going to find a whole bunch of awesome stuff that you will not get to find on here. Discussions, debates, what if battles, walkthroughs, playthroughs, you name it, I have it on there. So you guys might want to go on ahead and check it out. And don't forget to subscribe for so much more content, everybody. Once again, let us begin the week with our very first question. And it is from Muhammad. Hey, man, I am one of your biggest fans, and I love for you to answer these questions. Thank you, man. Question number one, what do you think of CM Punk going to UFC? Question two, what do you think of the Goku vs. Superman Part 2 battle? Question number three, uh, what is your favorite Dragon Ball Z attack? And lastly, also, what is your favorite moment uh, from the new show? I would really love for you to respond. Peace! Thank you so much, Mr. Muhammad. Now, to answer your first question, what are my thoughts on CM Punk going to the UFC? Um, everybody looks at CM Punk as a joke. Everybody is talking about how he's not going to last, how he is going to pretty much flop in the UFC. Hey, um, if CM Punk flops in the UFC, then he flops. Um, there's nothing more anyone can say. At least the guy is going out there and trying something different. Um, that's what I believe life is all about. It's just going out there and doing something different, doing something productive, um, and just overall gaining a different experience. I mean, Punk wrestling for years now, he's trying out something different now. Uh, will he succeed? I, I believe he can. Uh, CM Punk does have potential to succeed in any realm that he goes to, so I think he can succeed in the UFC. Um... Is he going to be an unstoppable force? Probably not. I think CM Punk at one point will get beat. Um, and I do believe at some point CM Punk will come back to the WWE um, at some given point in time. But my thoughts on him going to the UFC is I am very intrigued. I want to see how he does. I want to see uh, if he's able to pretty much shut the critics up, which is going to be very hard. Um, and I, 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 for me at least, I, I, I look forward to his first fight because um, growing up a CM Punk fan, especially watching him in Ring of Honor, Honor and then you know moving on forward to WWE and now to the UFC um it's actually very interesting the way everything is going about has his reputation died out a bit I believe so um he's not as hot as he once was about a year ago year and a half ago um but either way, once he debuts, his momentum is going to pick up, and I believe that's when we're going to see CM Punk's uh, potential be revealed, whether or not he's able to make it in the UFC or not. Um, to answer your second question, Goku versus Superman. Jesus, it always goes back to that. Now, am I upset? Yeah. Do I think the fight was fair? Probably not. But I do agree with the outcome of Superman winning because, um, as I said, I made a video a while ago called Whis vs. Superman, and I think you guys ought to definitely check that out. Um, if there is any character out there that I would say would give Superman a, a definite run for his money, it would be Whis. Um, as powerful as Goku is, he's no god. You know, Whis is a deity that could step up to Superman, I believe, and give him the, uh, the run that Superman deserves. Now, Goku vs. Superman Part 2, um, was I disappointed? Absolutely. I felt as if the battle was pretty much a lackluster fight, uh, considering the fact that Goku did have godlike powers and it wasn't executed to the fullest potential against Superman. Now, I understand that Superman 52 is supposed to be, uh, insanely powerful, like super OP'd, um, but I just felt as if the fight didn't really satisfy the fans like maybe it satisfied the superman fans because they get to they, they actually got to see you know superman lobotomize goku um but in the end like i said i mean i believe that Whis would give superman that run but in terms of that battle between goku and superman um i would say that you know i was disappointed on the end result because uh superman was pretty much able to handle goku no problem 
Um, but overall, I mean, I look forward to a possible third fight in the future. Uh, but needless to say, I think this one is probably going to be it. Until Goku show, you know, showcases a different feat of strength. Um, but as of this point right now, um, I mean, I, I, I'm over it because I finally understood why they picked Superman over Goku. Uh, but, I mean, needless to say, I, I think this battle was very lackluster. Um, now, to answer your third question, my favorite attack in Dragon Ball Z. Uh, actually, I love Beerus' Sphere of Destruction because um, he literally throws the power of the sun at you. And that's just so cool to see. Um, like, that's definitely one of my favorite attacks ever. Um, after seeing what Beerus was able to do in Xenoverse and then, you know, in Battle of Gods and stuff like that, um, like, just seeing that attack firsthand was just great, so I love the Sphere of Destruction. Um, I also love the Big Bang Kamehameha. I love, well, primarily I love the Super 100 times Big Bang Kamehameha because, uh, just the way Gogeta goes into it, just the way his, uh, his flow of motion, the way the energy is forming up, um, and, and the overall blast power is just, you know, immensely insane, so... I definitely love the Sphere of Destruction, the 100 times Big Bang Kamehameha, the Final Flash, which is one of my favorites, um, and lastly, if I had to pick one, I would say the Spirit Bomb, because it is a very large mass of energy being thrown at you uh, with, with such velocity and such force that I don't think anybody else could, you know, deflect it. I mean, um, you know, if, if, after watching Frieza hold it back and watching and watching Kid Buu literally throw it back, um, it was so cool to see. But needless to say, those would be my four, my, my actual four favorite attacks. Um, and finally, to answer your final uh, your final question, favorite moment in the show? Um, well, a lot has happened. Uh, in Dragon Ball Super thus far, so um, I, I can't really say that I have a deliberate favorite moment uh, because there are more moments to come. So for me, I would say as the show is progressing on forward uh, through you know Resurrection F and into Universe Six and stuff like that, um, I would say the show is going very well so far. I mean, I'm enjoying it at least. Uh, I would enjoy it so much more if they had an English dub to the actual anime, uh, but for that we're gonna have to wait and see what happens. But uh, for me, I, I don't think there has been a favorite moment yet because I'm still anticipating more. Um, but aside from that, I, I, I would say that would be it, man. Uh, thank you for the questions once again, Mr. Muhammad, and I hope you have a great day, bro. And now moving on to the next question, which is from Jason Watts. Hey, Alex, you, Paul, and Sean are my favorite YouTubers. Thank you, man. So here are my questions. Question number one, I am an upcoming YouTuber. I just uploaded my first video with a camera. Broken white boy status, and the game I am doing is Ultimate Spider-Man. How well do you think I can do? Question number two, how would you rate Fairy Tale? Uh, question number three, have you ever played Kingdom Hearts? If you did, what is your favorite out of the series? Last question, how would you rate J-Star's Victory versus Plus? Now... Thank you for the questions, Mr. Jason. It really means a lot to me. Now, to go to go back and answer your first question now, um, in order for you to pretty much have uh, any sort of success on here, you're going to have to first have um, decent equipment. Now, you know, recording gameplay footage with your camera isn't really a very good thing to do. Now, um, I've always recommended, you know, just certain capture cards like the Adaptech Game Bridge, perhaps, or maybe the... Uh, the uh, Black Magic Intensity or even the Elgato because those capture cards are definitely going to help you in the long run when you want to make more Spider-Man videos. Um, how do I think you'll do? That all varies on your commentary, that varies on your content, that varies on your consistency. I've always told people in order to be uh, you know successful you have to be very consistent and dedicated to what you do. So. Do I think anybody can succeed? Absolutely. I mean, look at me. I, I never, I never would have thought I would have been in the position that I am now. Um, and I've reached out to hundreds of thousands of millions of people, and I am very, very grateful of that. And my self-esteem before that was very low. I never would have thought, but I was still humble enough and appreciative of, of, of everything that I had. So, um, I used to be at a point where I used to record uh, gameplays with my video camera too, but you can't have that, you know, broke white boy status anymore. You're going to have to invest in equipment. Um, you know, the Xbox One and the PS4, they have built-in capture cards inside of them, so that could be a start. Uh, but ultimately, I, I think anybody could do well, so as long as you have the passion for that. Now, to answer your second question, I can't really rate Fairy Tale because I've never watched a single episode. Um, I'm, I'm actually watching various other animes right now, so I don't really have time to, you know, focus on fairy tale when I'm watching Hunter x Hunter. I just finished Death Note, watching Dragon Ball Super. So I'm actually trying to get, I'm actually trying to get into the flow of um, 
various different enemies before I get into Fairy Tale, actually. Um, to answer your third question, have I ever played Kingdom Hearts? I have. Uh, the second one was my favorite. Some people might differ and they might say, oh, well, the first one was the best for me. Uh, the second one was pretty memorable for me just because it was the first Kingdom Hearts game that I played amongst one and two. Um, two was pretty good, so I would have to say two. Um, and lastly, to answer your final question, J Star's victory. Uh, I would I, I can't really give it a rank because again I haven't even played that either. So um, from what I've been watching and, and hearing about the game, it looks great. Um, it definitely looks like a five star classic, especially with having all these anime characters in it, uh, waging war with one another. Um, but I can't really give it a rating because I never played the game fully. So. Anyways, Mr. Jason Watts, once again, I hope uh, you have much success in what you do with terms of Spider-Man, and uh, thank you for the questions, and I hope you have a very awesome day, my friend. And now, moving on to the next question, which is from Chronic the First. What's up, Alex? I find your content very entertaining, and just keep it up and gain the energy to defeat your YouTubers. Thank you, man. Uh, here are my questions. Question number one, what is your favorite saga in Dragon Ball Z and why? Question two, after Battle of Gods and Revival of F Sagas, uh, what do you think will happen next in Dragon Ball Super? If you don't know, uh, then how would you write it uh question three who are your top three favorite wwf slash wwe wrestlers of all time and why let's make it onto the fan mail well you are now on the fan mail man thank you for the question once again now to answer your first question that right there is pretty hard to answer because um all three sagas for frieza cell and majin buu were great in their own respects um each saga told a different story than the other uh i would have to say my favorite and this is very hard to answer, but I would have to say somewhat around the Cell Saga, um, because everybody was desperate to train, nobody was really prepared for Cell. Um, in the Majin Buu arc, of course, you had Goku who was a Super Saiyan 3, but he allowed the fight to actually drag on ahead because he wanted to give um, you know, someone else a shot at actually defeating Majin Buu and being the hero for once. But um, I don't know, I, it, it's very hard because the Cell Saga it had its moments where it left you speechless. Um, the Goku versus Cell fight was great. Gohan versus Cell spoke for itself. Uh, the Frieza saga, the Frieza saga was very good because the battle between him and uh, Goku was just spectacular. A four hour long, um, just mega battle happening throughout the planet. Um, I don't know, man. Like, I, I would have to say the Cell saga just because um, there was something about it throughout, throughout its entirety that reminded me a lot of like you know some really cool stuff that i used to watch back in the day before dragon ball z and uh i, I would have to say the cell saga if we really had to come down to like specifics um to answer your second question well they're obviously going to go based off of universe 6 uh they're going to tell the story on what's going on over there uh with the super giant dragon balls and you know the, its purpose on going over there um but more importantly is i would like to know how the entirety of the show is going to end off um that has been a question of mine for weeks now for months actually um is to know exactly when and how the show is going to end off if it's going to end off with oob and goku if it's going to end off differently um i would really like to know because i would want to see how everything plays off um with the ending of Dragon Ball Z, the original ending, and uh, for me, how would I write it? I mean, I I would I would not stop. I would not end Dragon Ball Super at all. Um, I would continuously keep going until like there's literally nothing left anymore. I mean, there's so much to tell from. If if you go back and you watch and you read some of the fan stuff, uh, the fan made mangas, the fan made you know fanfics and stuff like that. Um, the stories just keep going and going and going. And they could ultimately do that with Dragon Ball Super because if Pokemon is able to keep going uh, after, you know, decades of, you know, doing what it's been doing the entire time, then why can't Dragon Ball Super? So, um, I think the show after Revival of F, uh, it's going to it's gonna be very interesting because it's going to be things we've never seen before. Um, and that's something that I am personally looking forward to, like, a lot. Um, and to answer your final questions, top three favorites, that is very hard. Uh, that is actually very, very, very hard. Now... If I had to go back to the 80s, I would say my favorites would be Ric Flair, Roddy Piper, and Hulk Hogan. If I had to go back to the 90s, I would say my favorites were The Rock, Stone Cold, and uh, Shawn Michaels. If I had to go to the early 2000s, I would say my favorites were uh, Brock Lesnar, Kurt Angle, and Chris Benoit. If I, held, if I had to go to current you know, wrestlers today... I would have to say my favorites are uh, Daniel Bryan, Seth Rollins, and Adrian Neville. 
Um, if I had to go back to the 70s, however, again, I would have to say my favorites were uh, Dusty Rhodes, um, the Von Erics, and lastly, I would say um, Bruiser Brody. Those would have to be uh, honestly my top three favorites of those respective generations. So once again, my friend, thank you for the questions. That really means a lot to me, and I hope you have a great day, bro. And now moving on to the next question, which is from Devin Tank. Hey, Alex, I have some questions to ask you for fan mail. Sure, man. Question number one, Super Saiyan God, Super Saiyan Vegito versus Whis. Question number two, if Spawn and Superman Prime had a fight, who would win? Question number three, what is your opinion on Capcom remaking Resident Evil 2? Question number four, what are your thoughts on Call of Duty teams such as FaZe, Optic, etc.? Question number five, what's your opinion on Exo Zombies? Do you think it's better than Nazi Zombies? What are your thoughts? I really love watching your videos. I hope you have a great day. Thank you so much, man. Well, to answer your first question, Super Saiyan God Vegito versus Whis. That would be absolutely amazing. Um, I think at this point, every single person, including myself, has wanted to see Gogeta and or Vegito return in Dragon Ball Super. Um, I, I personally would love to see Vegito return. Then again, um, the ultimate question here is how is he supposed to separate later down the road when you need him to be, you know, their own separate entities? Uh, personally, for me, I think Super Saiyan God Vegito uh, would give Whis a tough battle, a very, a very hard fought battle indeed. Um, but there's something about Whis, guys. There's something about Whis that is just so mysterious and just so ominous. Uh, so for me, I think that his presence alone uh, would be enough to just give Vegito a run for his money. But in the end, however, I would have to say that the winner of this battle, um, damn, it's actually very, it's very hard to even call a winner because I do want to say Whis because he's able to revert back to time um, and he's able to alter, you know, history and whatnot. But Vegito, however, uh, would be extremely powerful you know, in that current state that he would be in, um, and I think even Super Saiyan God, Super Saiyan Vegito would definitely be able to defeat Beerus, um, but the question here is, you know, how far would Whis go to prove a point that he is the ultimate being here, you know, given the fact that Vegito's powers would far surpass, I believe, even Beerus, uh, would they be able to surpass Whis? Um, that is a question that I don't think I can answer, so for me personally, I would have to say this fight would probably be either a draw or if I had to select the winner, I would just have to say that Whis would probably be the winner because um, Whis's body, right? When he fights, his body just does, you know, just different motions. He doesn't fight in one motion. He kept telling, you know, Vegeta and Goku the exact same thing when he said, you know, like every single one of his body parts has like a mind of its own. So they react differently. Um, Vegito, on the other hand, he doesn't have that, you know, quality about him that he can, he, that he can react instantly upon battle. So um, I think that would definitely come into Whis's advantage, especially when going up against somebody like Vegito. So for me personally, I would have to say it would be Whis. Um, but also it would vary on so many different circumstances. Um, to answer your second question, Spawn versus Superman Prime. Uh, that's a, that's a very good question, actually. Um, that would be a very good fight, but for me, um, I don't know too much about Spawn to even say. Um, I, I am very familiar with Superman Prime, however, and it's just very hard to just picture these two battle because I think personally that Superman Prime would win just because... Um, he is virtually indestructible. I mean, Superman was created for the sole purpose of being immortal and pretty much a god. I mean, he has powers that no other superhero possesses, and I think that would give Superman Prime the advantage, however. But then again, some people might disagree and say, well, Spawn would win. Um, if you guys feel that way, let me know in the comment section below because this is something that I would definitely like to hear from you guys. Um, to answer your third question, I am excited as hell that finally Resident Evil 2 is getting a remake now. Um, I'm very curious on to how exactly they're going to do the remake. Um... A lot of you guys have seen my previous Resident Evil 2 video. Uh, my entire walkthrough has been just very lengthy, but it's, it, it's been very good nonetheless. Uh, so having Resident Evil 2 come back finally, um, I really can't wait to see you know the progression of the game itself. Um, I also want to know if they're going to use the same style uh, over the shoulder point of camera, or maybe like you know the the traditional you know camera pointed up in the sky and you're going on ahead and moving around and you know different cam angles and stuff like that so um i i, I want to know how they're going to base resident evil 2 off of and how they're going to execute it if, if they're going to have like a resident evil 4 type of style or if they're going to keep it you know traditional based but i am very excited i can't wait uh resident evil 2 is one of the best games out there period aside from resident evil 3 and 4 um 
but for me, I, I, I'm just very excited. I'm, I'm definitely going to play the game again, um, especially after going through what I went through in the second game, uh, playing it through the original PlayStation and whatnot. So uh, Resident Evil 2, I really am anticipating and cannot wait for my opinion on it. It's going to be amazing, just like how the Resident Evil 1 remake was done for the PS4, I believe. Um, Resident Evil 2 is just going to do just as good, so... Um, to answer your fourth question, I'm not so familiar with Call of Duty teams. I am familiar with FaZe and Optic. I, I, I've, I've always been more towards Optic uh, than FaZe itself. Um, I've, I, I've actually watched a few Call of Duty tournaments with my friend Omar, um, that involving Optic, and Optic is very, very good. Uh, but for me, I, I would have to say my thoughts on them are the fact that they're very good. Uh, they're very good at what they do, actually. They are professional, you know, Call of Duty players. Um, Given the circumstance, I think that uh, eventually Call of Duty is just going to be an MLG based game one day because uh, there are so many tournaments and so many, you know, contests being held on Call of Duty most of the year. Um, I think eventually down the road, Call of Duty is just going to center itself around MLG players, and uh, that's where I think that people like FaZe and Optic definitely fit in. Um, and to answer your fifth question, no, Exo Zombies is not better than Nazi Zombies. Absolutely not. Uh, Exo Zombies was fun to a certain extent, and now that we have Black Ops 3 coming out, Black Ops 3 Zombies is definitely going to blow away uh, Exo Zombies out the water. Um, Exo Zombies was fun for the time being, but there was something about it that just made it lackluster, and it just really wasn't as fun as you would expect it to be. Um, over on the flip side of things, Treyarch's Zombies mode is great in and of itself and forever will be great and that's why i cannot wait to play black ops 3 just because of the zombies mode in and of itself but is nazi zombies better hell yeah it is by far man uh but anyways my friend thank you for the questions and i hope you have a very very awesome day my friend and now moving on to the next question which is from poke i don't know how it took you nine hours for you to beat the bardock mission because it only took me two tries all you had to do is spam vanishing balls over and over and over again super easy don't worry i'm not a spammer online well i mean to answer that pretty much to answer that statement slash question um it didn't really take me nine hours it took me about like i would say five or six um it, it, it like it was hard man like my character at the time was based solely off of you know base attacks like just ground warfare punching you in your face kicking you in your stomach so that's why it took me so long because number one i didn't really know about the whole spamming system and number two i didn't really have any vanishing balls so i i, I can imagine if i did have vanishing balls it would have took me a lot less time um to go on ahead and defeat bardock but bardock was very hard i mean that mission particularly was just very hard and a lot of people were struggling as well as i was um you know spamming vanishing balls and spamming command mayas and stuff like that um i understand that's like the easy way out but at the time i did not know of this and it was just very hard for me to go on through and a lot of you guys that struggled on that mission you feel my pain because every single time you were so close on defeating frieza you know, like, one of his men would just happen to kill Bardock right then and there. And it was just so hard, especially when you're, when you're a very low level as well. Uh, because I remember at the time going into that, I was at a very low level myself. Um, now I can easily clear the mission without even, you know, blinking twice. Uh, but at the time, it did not take me a nine hours. It took me about five or six. And I remember just sitting there, and I was just like, oh my goodness, man. Like, this is the hardest thing that I've ever had to do in a Dragon Ball Z video game that I can remember because uh, every single time you were on the brink of defeating Frieza or at least one of his men, somebody somewhere would just so happen to kill Bardock and you can't really revive him on the main missions. Um, it's not like the parallel quest where you can go back and revive your teammates. I mean, that pretty much sucked a lot. Um, but the Bardock mission was very hard in and of itself. So, but anyways, Mr. Poke, thank you for the statement. Thank you for the question. I hope you have a great day, bro. And now moving on to the next question, which is from Joshua Ascended Saiyan. Hey, Alex, I know this is a long shot, but hell, I will try anyway. Question number one, if you were to get a tattoo that was Dragon Ball Z related, where would you get it and why? Question number two, who would win in a fight between Dante, Devil May Cry series, or Ichiko from the Bleach anime series? Question number three, if you had to choose between training with Goku or going on a date with the girl of your dreams, what would you choose? And if you could choose Goku, uh, what would be the first move slash technique you would want to learn? Well, thank you for the questions, Mr. Joshua. Now, to answer your first question, if I were to get a tattoo, what would I get? Um... Honestly, I would like to get something different, um, not necessarily knowing right now as of what I would want to get, but I think it would have to do with either Super Saiyan 3 Vegeta 
or it would have to do with uh, some sort of, you know, it, it, like embodiment of Beerus. Uh, Beerus is such a cool character, like he's such a laid back, mellow character, but when you piss him off, he's such a strong adversary. Um, he is a very powerful opponent, and I love the way uh, he just goes about things in the series. He's just so melodramatic, just, you know, laid back and just cocky and confident about his abilities because he's a god. But I don't know where exactly I would want to get a tattoo of him. Probably on my back, I think that would be, like, the best place. Uh, in Super Saiyan 3 Vegeta, just because I've seen some really cool pictures of him in his Super Saiyan 3 form, and he looks just absolutely badass. So I would definitely want to get Super Saiyan 3 Vegeta. Um, to answer your second question, honestly, I would have to go with uh, Dante. I don't know too much about Ichiko, but I do know a lot about Dante. I remember playing the Devil May Cry games, Devil May Cry 1, 2, and 3. Um, never played any other game after that, however, but Dante is a very, very powerful character. And I would have to say Dante on this one. For anybody out there who disagrees and they say Ichiko, uh, just let me know in the comment section below on why. And uh, finally, to answer your third question, I would obviously go with training with Goku because uh, let's say for example like you have to also think what if your little date with the girl doesn't necessarily go the way you want it to you know like then what you pretty much lost your opportunity to train with Goku so uh, I would definitely train with Goku and the first technique that I would like to learn honestly I mean let, let me let, let's let's all be realistic here I would love to learn how to fly um I think every single person would love to learn how to fly first because obviously uh, it's one of the basics in Dragon Ball Z is to, is to learn how to fly. Uh, I would love to learn how to fly first. I would love to learn how to unleash, you know, key blasts and key Kamehameha waves and stuff like that. Secondly, and lastly, I would love to learn how to become a Super Saiyan or at least a superhuman or, or just unlock my, you know, untapped potential because, um, you know, Gohan's a hybrid half Saiyan, half human, and he was able to pretty much unleash his full potential. So I, I would love to learn how to transform further, uh, you know, to better myself in a combat situation. But honestly, I would learn how to fly. I would learn how to throw key blasts. Um, and then lastly, I would learn how to become a Super Saiyan, uh, if I can be actually, but, uh, I, I, I would train with Goku nonstop. I would not be on YouTube. I would not be, uh, wrestling. I would just be training with Goku consistently over and over and over again until I became absolutely powerful. So once again, Joshua, thank you for the questions and I hope you have a very awesome day. And once again, everybody, thank you all for watching. My name is Umber Entertainment Gaming. If you guys have enjoyed the episode, don't forget to subscribe to my channel for all the latest news, information, and updates. If you guys enjoyed the episode, don't forget to smash that like button leave your questions and your thoughts and comments in the comment section below for next week's episode guys i really hope to see you all there please submit your questions in video format if you guys can also don't forget to check out unreal ent network once again guys from me to you thank you all for watching and i'll be seeing each and every single one of you guys in the next episode take it easy everybody peace